Hi, so in this video I'm going to be exploring the possible link between Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and strabismus. The reason for this is because the whole question of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome has been raised quite a bit in a strabismus uh, group that I bother with. Um, people are finding that they're developing this intermittent um, strabismus and at the same time they also find they get things like scoliosis and hip rotation um, which you know they're saying well I didn't have this before I'm getting this strabismus now I'm getting these muscle joint problems uh, could there be a link with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome um, so for those of you who don't know uh, the main thing the most people think of uh, when they think of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is hypermobility. Um, it does have other things as well, so it's not just about being hypermobile. There's plenty of videos about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, um, so they explain it a lot better than I can. Um, and I'm interested in this because, okay, I've got some of the features, the hypermobility, maybe some of the other features myself. Um, do I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? No, I, I doubt it. But um, it made me think that I've got quite a bit in common with these people in with the strabismus who are raising the same questions. Um, you know, I have had postural problems. I've never been diagnosed with scoliosis or hip rotation or an, anything like that but I can kind of feel my body twisting and bending that way and I'm also um, a bit on the hypermobile side as well so that that's why it grabbed my interest um, now with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome the um, there is certainly a link with eyesight uh, that that is uh, known about, and what tends to happen there is that people with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome um, can become short-sighted quite quickly. Um, so this goes into the whole myopia prevention, myopia reversal. Um, Thing that some people with um, who get myopia can get galloping myopia. Um, so you know they start off with a mild pair of glasses and then they adapt quite quickly and need more and more and more minus lenses. Um, so that that's. Um, for some people in the, the whole end myopia um, thing, there, there is that situation with them. So I'm wondering if those people actually also may be somewhere on the EDS um, spectrum, maybe not actually enough to have uh, a diagnosis, and to be honest, you, you wouldn't really want a diagnosis because to qua to qualify for all the criteria, it's uh, a pretty unpleasant condition. Um, but I do wonder if some people with uh, galloping myopia or strabi strabismus, which develops quite suddenly and then all these contortions, might be somewhere on that spectrum, um, kind of at a lower level, obviously, um, be, because of the fact that they can adapt. Um, so, you know, their, their eyes can flex quite a lot. Um, and also... For, for those of us with strabismus and problems, you know, mus musculoskeletal problems um, and joint pain and bending funny ways in order to look at things. I wonder if 
that is because we can, because we have some aspects of the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Um, so it's just wondering if that is a part of it. Now, on the other hand, uh, for some people who've had galloping myopia since they were children, it is very possible that the children have much more flexible eyes. So if you're given glasses at quite a young age, um, you might adapt to them a, a bit quicker than perhaps an adult would. So you'd want to rule that out. But um, for those people with strabismus um, who are wondering if they also have Ehlers-Danlos, um, the first thing to look at is, well, how hypermobile are you? Would you be able to, for instance, do that? Okay, that's a bit gross. You shouldn't try and do it. I mean, my, my thumb used to come right back past my wrist. Um, you know, if, if you can do stuff like that, or, you know, with more than one joint and you've kind of got, you know, that, um, where you were really quite flexible as a child, maybe that is something to take into consideration, um, which could help you get insight into how your strabismus is working, and maybe what strategy, <laughs> which strategies um, might be useful for you in living with it and coping with it. So that is just my little insight or my little wonderings um, about that aspect of it all.